Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to have a look at how you can use named cells and named ranges in Microsoft Excel. So first of all, if you look at the table on the left, the stock value table, what I have here is a cell with 20% in it, and that is going to represent the VAT amount. If I just type VAT as a label there, you can see that. So I want to name that cell so I can refer to it as VAT. So to name a cell, you need to be in that cell, and then you need to go up to this name box. You can see it on the screen there. And you just type VAT and press Enter, and that's all it is. You just name that cell VAT. Now normally, if you hadn't named a cell, this is how you'd have to work out the VAT in this particular example. You'd be going equals that times that. Now it's come up with the VAT cell straight away, but that would normally say V11. And you would have to put dollar signs on that cell reference so it locked it. And then you'd better pull that down. And if you didn't put dollar signs on that, it wouldn't work. Now, if I delete those off, I just, as you saw there, use the name equals, still equals, times and type VAT because I've named it. It refers to it and you can see it comes up as a little indicator underneath. Um, if it's a bigger word than that, you could double click on it, but I don't need to double click that. It's just correct so I can click the tick. It fills it in and I can double click the little cross down and get rid of the bottom one, which you don't want. And you can see that it's done it for each cell and it's worked it out. And if I change the percentage for VAT to something else, 25%, they're all looking at it. So they just change. So that's how you name an individual cell. However, there can be a few issues when you're naming cells. One of them is when you click into the name box, you can't type VAT and have a space and then another character because when you press enter it comes up with an error message saying you can't have spaces. I could have put an underscore in there so if you want a space you can have a little underscore symbol like that and then you can have like little sentences or phrases. Now that's one mistake. Now I also said when you was doing this that you must press enter. If you don't press enter, it's like canceling it. So if I type VAT and then clicked away, he wouldn't be doing it. So it's just canceling off. So that's slightly irrit irritating. Another mistake is, and uh, possibly the, a simple mistake is you click on the cell, but you don't click into the name box and you just start typing. And that's just obvious. You just made a mistake there. That's undo. The worst mistake in terms that it's it's harder and more complicated to fix is if you click into a cell and you name the wrong cell let's say we shouldn't have named that cell VAT it should have been this cell you can't just click in to this cell and go up the name box and type VAT because when you press enter one of the features you get with names is that it does the navigation so I'll just press enter and it just goes to where VAT is so if I click over here, for example, uh, in fact, if I go to a different sheet and click in the name box and type VAT and press enter, it will just take me back to that sheet where VAT is. So it's a navigational aid. But I can also click elsewhere in this spreadsheet and type equals VAT. And it will just work it out for me. And if I go onto a different sheet altogether and type equals this cell, for example, times VAT it will work that out for me even though VAT is on a different sheet once you've named a cell in a particular workbook you can refer to that named cell anywhere in the workbook on any sheet which is what I've just done there so if I just go back to VAT like so so if you had named the wrong cell you can't just go back into the correct cell and use the same word because it does what I've said it does the navigation a bit so what you have to do in that scenario is go to formulas into this middle bit defined names name manager and correct it in here so you find it down the bottom it will be it's alphabetical VAT and you repoint it to wherever it should be and click this tick so in our case it's not incorrect so we can just leave it as it is click close to that so that's okay that's how you fix it 
Now that's how you name a cell. How you name a range is you highlight the range and you do exactly the same. Type hours, type over time, or you could highlight this entire table and get the computer to name it for you. And again, I'm on formulas. This time I want to use this tool, create from selection, I click that. And it says, do you want to use the top row, the top row labels to name these figures? Yes, I do. And do you want to use the left column labels to name these rows? Yes, I do. So click OK. And that will basically do what you were about to do manually. And it will also put the little underscoring for you automatically. So it's quite a better, it's a better way of doing it than manually doing it because I would have had to type it like that. And if I highlight the row, the row is also named with the underscore like so. And then once you've used names in a table like this, you can refer to the names like so. So this is saying hours plus overtime in brackets. So that do that bit first. Once you've got that answer, times it by the rate. So 40 plus 3 times by 10 is 430. Now how it works is it basically as long as it sees the name for that row, it will pull the figures off for that row. So this one's looking at the next row down and so on and so on. So if I type over here the formula that you've got in there, if I type this formula, so this formula is spilled down, so it's filled it down automatically so if I type in the top row even though I'm not in the table so it's going to be equals open bracket um, hours plus overtime do that first close the bracket times rate that's that's what I want when I've ticked that it just spills it down it's not formatted to pounds or anything but there you go it spills it down now if I put that there, let's try this one. So equals hours plus overtime, close the brackets, times rate. Same formula, click the tick. Open the bracket, missed that off. Click the tick. It spills it down there so whenever you type the formula it's looking at the names and filling the information in from the top so it's just basically repeating that information there now this little table on the left gives you like a little lookup because I've put Stephen Saxton in a space take home so it's giving me basically that cell there that one in you can see that and this one is doing the next one down, Kevin Rule 36802, just by putting the word there and a space. So that's a quick look at how you do names. A little exercise on that. If we go into this name exercise, uh, let's get rid of that cell. If I highlight this information and just down to there, use that create from selection tool, just the top row in this example use the top row labels click OK and then what I can do now is type equals and now when I type or start typing duration you see the name comes up at the top and if I press the tab key it will select the top option if I want to come down I'll have to use my arrow keys and then tab times cost so cost I'm just going to type cost and then press tab, click the tick, and that spills down, which is what I want. Now the VAT amount is not on this sheet, but remember I named it on this sheet, names, so I can refer to it like this. So I'll go equals, type in sub, subtotals there, pressing tab, times VAT. So VAT is this one, pressing tab, tick fills it down and then the last one is to add these two together so it's going to be equals sub pressing tab plus VAT amount the VAT amount column so start typing and uh, this time I want to come down one and then tab 
that's the formula and tick and it fills it down so all of these are using name ranges and the form is, is spilling down into the space it should be so that's an example of using name ranges in a little data table like this so hopefully that was of use to you thank you for your time and i will see you on the next one